uh, thank you for joining me for this Q&A uh, with the director of Mangrove, uh, Steve McQueen. Hi, Steve. Thanks for being here. Uh, pleasure. Thank you. So, um, Mangrove is, I think, the film that comes first chronologically in the Small Axe series. Mm -hmm. um, and the, um, you mentioned that 1968 was uh, an important year. Um, for um, maybe I would say in the history of, of black British activism, uh, given the Enoch Powell speech um, about the rivers of blood, that's sort of this famously racist speech. Um, and it was also the year that um, Frank Critchlow uh, opened the mangrove. Uh, so can you say a little bit about, you know, when you, and you were, you were not yet born. I think you were born in, Born, yeah. End of the yeah. Board. yeah. So um, when when the story of the Manger of Nine, um, when when did you first uh, learn about it? Uh, it's it's you know I, I kind of like in my consciousness. I mean, my 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 mother was very much sort of a, um, you know telling these sort of stories. Of course, when I was young about these things, and so I I, I knew growing up about these stories, and I was always a bit sort of a surprised that it wasn't sort of so much uh, in the public consciousness. Um, and this is one of those things where I just, you know, West Indian people, you know, I, when I grew up, they loved Westerns. Westerns were the thing. My, my father was crazy about Westerns. And of course, country music, country, country and Western, rather, excuse me. Country music was, was huge in the West Indies. I mean, I think, you know, there was, I don't know, it must have been some sort of, uh, you know, some kind of uh, blitz and from from the states, sort of, sort of, you know, country music, country music, country music. Um, so the whole idea of the mangrove for me is almost like a western. It's, it's like Frank, this guy opening a, a saloon. Um, you know, maybe you know he, you know, he was, um, you know, he's going, he's going straight, and he just opened this little saloon. And it's hole in the wall, mangrove. Mangrove was a place where he wanted the community to sort of feel a little bit. Um, a home away from home um, that cooked you know, West Indian food and you know people gravitated to it. But the, the, the mangrove it became so popular that it wasn't just a, a, a sort of a haunt for um, the you know local West Indian community. It was a haunt for sort of you know the sort of the, the hoi polloi. Um, you know if it was the stones or if it was the, the animals or whatever Hendrix or you know. Marvin Gaye or whatever, it became this place where people would go. It became the cool joint in town and everybody wanted to go there. Um, you know, you know Nessa Redgrave and, 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 and the like. Um, and I think, you know, it's the story of this guy who opens a saloon and this sheriff who comes to town um, and, uh, you know, wants to sort of, uh, you know, get in this guy's face. Um, it's, and it's a, it's a very simple story, really. I know you know a lot about film history. Did you have any particular Westerns in mind as you were writing this? No, I will say. Sorry, I said that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to mention any. It's just, just because I just feel that those kind of narratives are very, those, those stories aren't, they aren't they? They, they? they are about sort of some guy who's trying to go on a straight and narrow after he was, a, after he was bad. And, uh, you know, this, 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 there's, there's, that, there's that sheriff who, who can't forget, who won't let go, and sort of wants to bring him back to his past um, uh, and, and, and wants to close him down. Um, so it's that simple, just a simple story. You know, it's a bar, it's a hole in the wall. Mangrove, but mangrove became the front line. The mangrove became the sort of um, the, 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 the front line of the state against any kind of black sort of consciousness in, in, in London, any kind of black gathering of intellectuals or, or thinkers in London. And that's, that, 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 that's, that's the truth. It was very strange that this became, this little, this little hole in the wall became so threatening, but it, but it did. Yeah. And then for me, the movie starts off with some kind of, I like the idea of starting off some kind of cheap soap and then ending up as sort of, a, you know, a, a, a Lawrence of Arabia. It's kind of like, it's a, it, it's a snowball. And you can't believe, it. you can't believe it's gone that far. You can't believe it's, it's sort of, it's, 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 uh, it could go that far. Because at a certain time, you know, no, it's going to stop here. No, no, it's going to stop here. But actually go all the way to, you know, the Crown Court. It goes all the way. The old Bailey. 
Can, can you say a bit about the process of um, researching this particular film? Um, it sounds like a lot of research did go into to the project um, overall, but in the case of um, Mangrove, I, some of the members of the Mangrove Nine are still alive, I, I believe. I think Althea Jones and, and, and Barbara Beast and maybe some others are still alive, even though I think Frank Critchlow and Darkus Howe are no longer with us. Mm -hmm. Um, we had an amazing uh, researcher, Helen, who was just incredible. And again, lots of interviews, lots of, um, you know, I interviewed some people. And, and Alistair, Alistair, the co-writer, was hugely sort of in, in town. Because he actually, you know, yeah. he, you know, he the Chris Lowe family, and uh, you know, he actually went to Frank's funeral. And he had, you know, sort of, had found, in fact, because that, that's sort of strange enough, the year, that year of the starting of the, of the case of the mangrove, uh, there were no actual court records, but we did have records uh, taken from the, uh, from the local um, uh, gazette who sent the journalists in there every day and recorded all of the trial. Um, and that was extremely helpful as far as the trial is the trial concerned. But, you know, um, interviewing people like uh, Anthea, um, was hugely important just to get the crust of, of it and, and, and others who were, who were around it. But mainly just, I want to focus on Frank because Frank is this, this guy who, all he wants to do is sort of um, open a restaurant for his local community, but he gets you know, entangled in this thing, which is bigger than he can ever think of. Can, can you say a little bit about putting this cast together? Um... I think Letitia Wright is, is, I think, fairly well known to 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 a lot of people, but um, it's it's quite a you know, really impressive ensemble cast. I'm actually also curious if you could say a little bit about how you found the actors for for Love Is Rock, because I mean the the performances across the films are are really remarkable. I think people just haven't got you know it was easy just because we had well we had Gary Daly who was who was a cast director who was amazing, but there's so much talent. There's talent. Um, it's like, you know, it's like and my mother would say in Grenada, there's a lot of mango trees and there's so many mangoes, people play football with the mangoes because but there's no way to sell them, there's no way to store them, there's no way to sort of can them. And in some ways, these, these were the actors, so many great actors, but they had, they had nowhere to show their talent. But we were very lucky, we were very fortunate to sort of um, be able to work with them. And of course, some weren't as trained as others, but as soon as you sort of, you're in the group, that was it. It's all about opportunity, Dennis, and, and that was it. And I was very happy, and I was very happy, and I was very grateful to sort of ha um, have them on, on, on this project because you know they, they, they made the project what it, what it is. Yeah. But at the same time, I think I, I read um, an opinion piece that you wrote in The Guardian a couple of months ago about the lack of, um, British, of black representation behind the camera uh, on a British film set. Um, and I was wondering if you could say a bit more about that. I mean, returning, you know, um, to make your first British production in 12 years. And yeah, also in the States when I was, I made films in the States, it's, it's always been, you know, and I've always asked and say, why this? And, and it's always been excuses. Um, and it's one of those things where I've done the best I can, um, but you're so far in production, you know, you just have to get on with the, on with the show this time. I was ready for them. I was like, okay, this is how it has to be. This is how I need it to be. Um, and it was, I was very grateful for um, to, uh, um, Tracy um, and David, the two producers on this, who sort of basically facilitated that and got it done and accommodated that. And we had based on, and, and, and every department, we had at least two trainees, um, which was amazing. Um, because again, it's about opportunities. And if you don't get opportunity, how are you the, uh, be able to sort of, you know, have experience. So that was for me a very important thing. So we did, you know, I think not as good as I would like, but it was pretty, I mean, it was I mean, to have uh, you know, at least two um, or, or, or as well as apprentice on in every, in every uh, um, excuse me, um, department, as well as I think it's three heads of, three black heads of, of, of uh, department, now four at certain points, costume, camera, sound, and myself, um, so that was very important. It was, it, was, it, was, it was very important, very important. And also the fact that matter is that uh, this talent is out there, but if you don't, don't get an opportunity, I mean, I know in the UK, we have at least two generations of, 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 of talent that have gone, that have never had the opportunity to shine. Um, and it's just, it's heartbreaking really, heartbreaking. 
you you said that um, you know the mangrove nine was something that was always in your consciousness growing up, but but I'm I'm wondering if there was a moment of of political awakening for you as a young man. Um, I mean, I think I do think there's a strong you know, political dimension in in your work as an artist and a filmmaker. I mean, and if you think of you know. Um, I mean, your first feature, Hunger, is a film about about protest. You know, so um, I'm day, wondering if there was from day one, because you know, as a black male child growing up in London, you know, at a certain point you'll ask yourself who, how, why, and what, uh, because of who you are. So, I mean, there's never a day when uh, you don't think of it in one way. And as growing up, I, you know, I think as you know, as a, as a young man, as a, as, a, as a young boy, young child. You know, critical from day one. Absolutely, there's no, there's no. How, 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 how could I not be? Unfortunately, or fortunately, you know, how can I not be? Not to say they took away any innocence. In fact, it illuminated a lot of things. But it's almost it's unavoidable for me as a you know, as a black as a black person, as a black man, or as, as a black child, because there's, you always constantly ask yourself who, how, why, and what. Always, always. Um, you know, I just did. So you wouldn't point to any particular moments in, I'm, I'm curious just because I think the, you know, the period that um, the films cover sort of math over your formative years, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm wondering what your experiences of those years were as, 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 as a boy, well, as a young, you know, well, as. There are moments where I could, you know, the right moments, um, but there are moments, but it has happened since the first time when, you know, um, I was, they, they were trying to exclude me and uh, a, a, a group from school. You are, well, why? You know, and then I remember my, my, my neighbor, Milton. Milton came from Grenada too, he's a, he's, a, he's a neighbor of mine. And Milton, I remember one day he, because he's always, he was a wonderful mud guy, he always, always used to post me um, uh, news clippings and, and put him in an envelope and put my name on it. And one day I got this booklet through the door and I opened the booklet. What's this booklet? And it was about this just black guy. Like American guy, I was looking at this. So it was just as Welsh miners and you know uh, anniversary. And there's this guy called Paul Robson. Who was this black American guy? You know, Welsh miners. I couldn't. I couldn't make. I couldn't make head or tail of it. And then, you know, this is when I was 11 years old. <laughs> so it was just constantly, constantly sort of asking myself questions. Constantly sort of. Um, yeah, it's it's and it's a part of your existence, isn't it? I mean, it was. I, I could. I couldn't avoid it. That's it. it was, yeah. So just one one last question for um, about Mangrove, and I'm I'm wondering if you if you see this film, I guess, and and um, the the other films in the series as in conversation with um, this a small but I think important you know tradition of, of Black British cinema. I'm wondering you know there there are certain films um, that are contemporaneous with the events in small acts, like I think and, uh, films like Babylon. You know, and pressure, and I'm wondering if those were important films for you as as a young man, um, and and whether you see these films as sort of um, you know, in conversation with them. Babylon was because I remember seeing Babylon, and thinking, oh my god, uh, but you know, it's kind of it was funny for me because then all of a sudden there's a big screen, being a culture which you never actually saw got any attention at all, and that was funny and interestingly now Dennis Burrell, who did the music on 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 on, uh, on Babylon, uh, produced Silly Games. And who is in the picture? He's the old guy with the hat. That's Dennis. <laughs> so yeah, that was a crossover. There was a there was there was a crossover there. Um, but I, yeah, that was interesting because that was the first time I saw that on on a big screen. That, that, uh, definitely, but Babylon, um, you know, and, and the humor as well, which was kind of which was which, which was kind of great. Um, but it's you know, I I would I would say that. Um, there hasn't never been enough, of, of course. And in some ways, maybe it was my sort of, uh, my, 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 my hunger, my sort of passion to sort of fill that gap possibly, you know, and ask questions at the same time. Because, you know, cinema, film, it's just this wonderful medium where, you know, again, you're working with these actors, you're telling stories. So it's, you know, uh, yes, politics comes into play, but it's all about human, um, I say human journeys, which which are which are in there, um, you know, and I think Frank Critchlow goes on a massive journey. You know, Frank is not an intellectual. 
Frank, you know, he, you know, he's not political. He's just a guy who just wants to open a restaurant and 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 celebrate with his friends. And then, you know, but he's opened his door to every and anyone, you know, the the the, 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 the black power movement, the sort of intellectuals, the, the the but also at the same time, you know, look, people who just want to sort of come and 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 talk about the old times and and sing, you know, and feel a little bit a home away from home. So through that, he was, had become political. He was forced to become. You know, these children, these young kids who are being pulled off the streets and 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 beaten and, and, and intimidated by the by the police, he had no alternative but to get in, in, in involved. And what's interesting was also about Darkus's speech. When Darkus says about Frank, he says, um, you know, you know, if you know, the, the mangrove did not belong to Frank anymore. It belonged to the community, and and rightly so. And Frank knew that. And Frank, you know. He, you know, he was pulled along in, in, in the current. Well, I want to thank you, Steve, for joining us for this uh, Q&A about Mangrove. And I want to urge everybody to also watch the other two uh, films um, from the Small Axe anthology that are in the New York Film Festival this year, Love is Rock um, and Red, White and Blue. So thanks again, Steve. Pleasure. Thank you.